hi welcome to this video in this video we are going to cover everything about flutter push notification using firebase push notifications are notifications coming from the server they are a very important feature in modern day application because they encourage your users to further engage with your application for this i created a new flutter project and i did some code cleaning so as you can see we are inside the basic counter application next we are going to create a new firebase project for this we go to the firebase console we create a new project i'm going to name it push notification we can either enable or disable google analytics i'm going to disable it and now we wait for our project to be ready great our new project is ready so now we should link our existing flutter application to this firebase project for this we have two options we can either follow the instructions here and do it manually for android and the instructions here for ios or we can use another tool which is the Flutter Fire CLI. The Flutter Fire CLI is a tool that helps you integrate Firebase into your application almost automatically. We already did a video covering everything about the Flutter Fire CLI, so please make sure to check it out. Do you want to learn Flutter in a better and faster way? Then simply join our 12-week Flutter training on heyflutter.com where you master all the Flutter topics such as Start, UI Design, State Management, Firebase, Clean Architecture, Databases and so on by watching our structured courses that help you for each topic to go from a newbie until an expert level in Flutter. Okay, so back into our Firebase console, we are going to add Firebase into our Android Flutter application. For this we click here on this android icon next we should find the android package name so back into our source code we go into the android folder app folder src main and finally the android manifest file this is the package name of our application so we copy it we paste it here we register the app next we should download this configuration file so i'm saving it here on the desktop great so we should put it into the correct location which is next to the src folder for this i'm going to drag and drop it great for the next step we should add the firebase sdk for this we go to the project level build.gradle file which is this file here so we should make sure that we have the google repository here if not we should add it and we should add a dependency here okay so i'm going to copy this line and i'm pasting it here and again, we should make sure that we have the Google repository. As for the next step, we move on to the app level build.gradle file, which is this file here. So we should apply some plugin here. For this, I'm going to copy this line. I'm pasting it here. And we should add some dependencies. So we go here. We copy this. I'm pasting it here. And that's it, we are ready to use Firebase with our Android Flutter application. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the steps needed for iOS because I do not own an iOS development environment, but we already did a video covering everything you need to know about iOS and Firebase, so please make sure to check it out. So now we are adding the Firebase packages. For this, I open a new terminal. We go to the pubspec.yaml and we run this command, flutter pub add firebase core. Great. as you can see firebase core has been added next we run this command flutter pub add firebase messaging and as you can see the firebase messaging has been added successfully okay so before we proceed we are doing a small prevention for this we go to the android folder the app folder and the build.gradle and in the default configuration we change the minimum sdk version to 19 this is super important in preventing our application from crashing in the future okay so now we are going to create the api folder for this we go into our lib folder we create a new folder we call it api and inside it we create the firebase api file okay so inside this file we are going to create a simple dart class responsible for all of our notification logic so first we create the firebase api class inside it we create a firebase messaging instance of course we need to import the firebase messaging package next we create the init notification method and we mark it as asynchronous inside this method we add this method for requesting permission from the user on ios this will show a dialog on android it will return a value indicating whether the app notification are enabled or disabled by the operating system okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the firebase cloud messaging token this token is an identifier for our device in our application and we will use it later on for sending the notification to this specific device for now we are going to print it to the console however in a real world application you would probably want to save this token somewhere in your database alongside your user entity to use it later on okay great so far so now we are going to jump into the main.dart 
Okay, so inside the main function we need to initialize Firebase by calling these two lines and then we need to call the notification class and method we have just created and of course we mark the function as asynchronous. Okay, so now I'm going to save this and we are going to run our project. I have my phone plugged into the computer. Okay, great. So as you can see, this is the FCM token printed to the console. So now our application is fully integrated with Firebase and we can proceed. Okay, so back to the Firebase API file. We are going to add some code which allows us to receive a notification in the background in the terminated case. So inside the init notification method, we add this line on background message or the background handler. We pass a function to it. Please note that this function cannot be an anonymous function. It must be a top level function meaning it's not a class method which requires initialization so I'm going to declare it here outside of the Firebase API class so we write the handle background message and we pass a remote message as a parameter to it so now I'm going to print the notification title body and the message data if exists okay great so I'm going to hot restart the application great so I'm going to copy the FCM registration token now we jump into our Firebase console so the engage tab, the cloud messaging tab, and we send our first message. The title can be push notifications and the notification body can be our awesome. And we click on this, we add the FCM registration token because we want to target this device. And now I'm going to move my application to the background and we send the notification. Great. As you can see, we have just received a notification with the parameters we entered here. Okay, so if we jump into our debug console, we can see the log that we expected. Title push notifications, body are awesome, and the empty payload. Okay, so if we click on this notification, we are redirected into our application. Great. So now I'm going to terminate my application because we want to test the terminated case. So as you can see, our app is terminated. Okay, so back to the Firebase console, we are going to send another message to the same FCM token. Great, as you can see, we received another notification with the parameters we wanted. So if we click on it, our application is open from the terminated state. Okay, next we are implementing the navigation to a particular screen or notification click. For this, we need to create some UI. For this, I'm creating another folder inside the lib folder, which is the page folder. Inside it, I'm creating two screens. First is the notification screen dot dart. And for the next screen, it is the home screen dot dart. Okay, so for the home screen, we create a very simple widget, just a scaffold with an app bar. For the notification screen, it's almost the same. We just add a named route to it. Okay, so if we jump to the main dot dart, we add navigator key for navigation purposes. We change the material app into our own. We import the missing files. And finally, we get rid of the existing widget. So if I save this and I perform a hot restart, this is our UI now. Okay, so if we go to the Firebase class, we are going to add some code here. So we create the handle message method. If the message is null, we exit this method. Else we navigate to the notification screen with the message as an argument. Next, we create this method for further organization of our code. So we add this line, which is very essential for the iOS foreground notification. This will become more essential in the future. We add this line, which is the get initial message. This is responsible for performing an action when the app is open from a terminated state via a notification. So we pass the handle message to it, meaning we want to execute the handle message method when the app is opened from a notification. Next, we add this line, the on message opened app, which is the same but for background case, meaning we want to execute the handle message method when the application is opened from the background state via a notification. Finally, we add the background handler, we move it here for better organization of our code. So inside the init notification method, we call the init push notification method here. Now we jump to the notification screen. Inside the build method, we add this line, which is the argument we pass to this screen. And we display everything from the argument here. Okay, so if I hot restart my application, 
So I'm moving my application to the background and I'm going to the Firebase console. Cloud message and tab as usual. So I'm writing a title as background notification is here. And I send a test message to this FCM. So the notification is here. I'm clicking on it. As you can see, we navigated not to the home screen, but to the notification screen with the argument we passed. So we have the title, body, and the empty payload. So if I get rid of my application, I change the title, send the message. The application is terminated, as you can see. We received a notification. We click on it. This can take a while because the application is launching and we are navigated to the notification screen with the arguments we wanted. Okay, so far so great. But what happens when our notification arrives and our application is in the foreground? In this case, Firebase messaging is not enough. We need another package, which is the Flutter local notification. So we go to the pubspec.yaml inside the terminal. We run this command, flutter pub add flutter local notifications. As you can see, it has been added successfully. Next, we go to the Firebase API class. So first, we need to create an Android channel, which is a sort of notification category. We pass some settings to it and we need to register it inside the Android manifest file. So we go to the Android folder. Inside the Android manifest file, outside of the activity tag, we add another tag. We provide the channel ID and the channel importance to it. So now we register our channel and back to the Firebase API class. Next, we need to create a Flutter local notification plugin instance. And now we are going to take advantage of an FCM method, which is the on message listener. This listener triggers whenever a message arrives when our application is in the foreground. So we just add it into our init push notification method. We extract the notification object from the message object. If it is now, we exit our method. Else we show a local notification with the hash code title body of the notification we have just received. And we provide the channel ID, name and description to it. Of course, of the channel we have just created and we provide an icon to it. As for the icon, we need to go to the Android folder, app folder, SRC, main and res folder. So I'm just going to copy this image from the mipmap folder and I'm pasting it inside the drawable version 21 folder and I'm pasting it inside the drawable folder. Of course, you can provide whatever image you want, but you just need to provide the correct path to it. Okay, so inside the Firebase API class, as for the payload or the data we pass from the notification to the local notification, it can only be a string, not an object. So we just need to transform it into a map and then we decode it as a JSON string in order to preserve our object. Okay, great so far. So now we are creating another method, which is the init local notification method. So first we initialize iOS. Next, we provide Android initialization settings and we provide the drawable icon we have just added. Next, we put together both of the Android and iOS settings initializations and we initialize the local notification with the settings we provided. For the onSelect notification method, this is the method that triggers when a user clicks on a local notification. So we just need to decode the payload we encoded earlier and we create a remote message object from it, which we need to pass to our handle message method in order to trigger navigating to the notification screen. As we seen earlier, now we need to resolve platform specific implementation for Android. For iOS, this of course would be different. And finally, we create the notification channel with the Android channel we added earlier. So now back to the init notification method, we just add or call our init local notification method. Everything is good so far. We just hot restart our application. You may face some errors right now. That is because we did a lot of work on the Android folder. You just need to reinstall your application if you face an error. And don't forget to copy the FCM token because it changes on every installation. Okay, so back to the Firebase console. I'm creating a notification with the title foreground notifications are awesome. I'm sending a test message to this FCM. As you can see, we have just received a notification while our application is in the foreground. And if we click on it, we are redirected to the notification screen with the data we entered. So everything works perfectly. As you can see, we managed to get notification whenever the application is in the foreground, background or terminated. This was super easy thanks to Firebase. I hope you find this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.